Hello, Flawless family. Uh, today I am here with a special guest, our Flawless intern, Georgie. We're just here to have a conversation on our community conversations that we've been having with the Meeting House, um, led by Ife Leonard. And you know what we really want to dive into is the We Wear the Mask poem. Uh, but you know, before we dive into the poem, before we dive into everything we've learned from the Meeting House conversations, First thing I have to ask you, Georgie, is simply, you know, how are you really doing? You know, it's been a tough time in 2020. As we've seen working together, we, you know, we've seen a lot happen this year. So, you know, it's not the flawless way if I don't start off by asking you how you're doing. So how are you, Georgie? Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, all things considered, I'm doing well. Um, I'm grateful that I'm in New Jersey. So coronavirus wise um i feel pretty safe you know i feel like my state's pretty safe um and i am moving back to chicago though soon because i go to school there and i'm looking forward to that so i'm lucky i have some things to be grateful for right now which like you mentioned you know in terms of what we do at flawless um practicing gratitude so i've been practicing a lot of gratitude lately so that's good yeah, I love that. I love how you have a positive spin on the tough situation. Uh, but yeah, diving into the, the community conversation that we would have at the meeting house, you know, before we get to the poem, I want to ask you kind of uh, your perspective, your reflection, because when we go into these conversations, we're kind of coming from, from different um, perspectives. You know, me as a Black man, uh, I have a certain perspective on the topic, on the situation from my experiences in my life, and you as a white woman um, have your pers perspectives and whatnot. So I kind of, you know, we, we've written some reflections on it, but I kind of want to hear your thoughts or maybe a, a main takeaway that you've gotten or a main lesson from the conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. Um, one thing that, you know, I've been kind of experiencing throughout this whole thing is just my, I guess my rule of thumb for myself is that I just try to be a listener and not that I'm not being vocal about anything, but I'm definitely trying to educate myself every day. And every time I see um, a black person share their perspective online, or if it's one of my friends, you know, I listen to them and I try and, um, you know, understand them, take their, um, you know, point of view into account. One thing that, you know, I've been learning that I'll admit I haven't really um, known to do in the past was, um, has been to like take education like as my own responsibility and to like not ask my friends, hey, how do I do this? How do I do that? But like um, take it into my own hands. Like I've been doing a lot of Googling, uh, signing petitions, things like that, you know, it's just like a lot of education I think is it's a big thing right now, you know? Yeah, and, and I would say that's, that's, you know, really compassionate and empathetic on your part um, to be aware of the trauma that goes through, you know, really having to relive that experience in order to educate. So I do appreciate you being empathetic in that way. And, you know, I offer my thoughts too from what I've learned and kind of the biggest thing I've learned from the Meeting House and, you know, Ife and really everyone involved because I've learned a lot even from people who have offered their experience you know, just people that are audience like we are. And it's just this, this, you know, thought of privilege. And I've, I wrote about it in one of our reflections and how we frame privilege and how we think about privilege. Um, and just understanding that we all do have privilege. You know, some privilege is greater than others, but, you know, like, you know, you have white privilege, but I have, you know, male privilege and, you know, the different dynamics, how that works together and how we can use our privileges to, instead of being ashamed of them, to help uplift others. Um, and you know, I'll, I'll look back to an example given on one of the calls where someone said, if you're walking uphill and you know, you're walking normally and you see somebody in a wheelchair trying to roll uphill, you wouldn't be ashamed that you can walk. Or, you know, maybe you would, but what you would do with that privilege is offer a helping hand. And so in the dynamic of, you know, with these community conversations being centered around, you know, racial justice, and that's kind of being the driving point of community conversations. So in, in the thought process of racial privilege, you know, instead of people wanting to deny that privilege, it's important that we use that privilege to offer a helping hand the same way you would to somebody with a physical disability. So 
just my thoughts and you know i appreciate yours as well but now as we get into because matt it's, it's as we talk about you know the racial justice and racial equality and, and how that dynamic is happening in our country there's also been a huge talk with COVID 19 and a huge debate around the mask and so we even like that came into our conversation so uh we have a poem prepared that you're going to read for us so feel free to, to share your screen and, and you know we can dive into that and share that right. with the audience i'm sharing it now just want to make sure you can see it visible okay perfect so i'm going to read a poem called we wear the mask by paul lawrence dunbar we wear the mask that grins and lies it hides our cheeks and shades our eyes this debt we pay to human guile with torn and bleeding hearts we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties why should the world be over wise in counting all our tears and sighs nay let them only see us while we wear the mask we smile but oh great christ our cries to thee from tortured souls arise we sing but oh the day is vile beneath our feet and long the mile but let the world dream otherwise we wear the mask mm -hmm. and, and you know to me that that's kind of i when we first heard it on community conversation i thought it was a powerful um you know message and we spoke to janine about it and whatnot but then after doing my research and learning a little bit more about um you know the author and you know kind of his time frame of writing this uh you know paul orange dunbar this really it really goes deeper to me poetry is an art so i think with all art there's two perspectives to look at there's the perspective of what is the message that the artist is trying to convey so there's that outward approach and then there's also that inward approach of you know we're all coming from different perspectives so what is the message what is my personal message in this um so i think that there's two parts here i think that the message that the author is trying to convey just based off his other his previous work um this is someone that's writing kind of in the post civil war uh times so i think this poem was written in 1895 so you know sometime after the civil war and you know, it, it kind of speaks to the experience of being oppressed, right? So the mass is kind of this, this, this thing to, uh, you know, the mass is showing people who are part of the community who have to wear the mask um, to try to mask their true feelings. And I kind of go by, go through it um, line by line, just from my research. And you know, we wear the mask that ends in lies. So. That's kind of saying we all wear a mask that makes us look like we're happy, but it may be a lie. So I think that's important when we talk about like we're in an industry of self-care, we're in an industry of um, you know, people, but we know how vulnerable it is to share your stories. We know how vulnerable it is to be authentic, right? So um, just seeing that, like that's kind of what the mask represents is people who can't be their true selves who can't be authentic who you know have to pay that price um and th just how that works in the uh and you see it even in, in like the ending paragraph and they say despite all this you know i think the, the last line saying we wear the mask like that's not a like we wear the mask it's not something of joy it's like despite all this um like meanwhile we still have to wear this mask so just understanding, doing my research about the author, how powerful the mask is, and the reason why it was brought up in our community conversation, not only just because it's, it's convenient that right now with COVID-19, everybody's wearing a mask, and then this is a poem about you know, racial injustice and a time where theoretically, you know, black people were advancing, but it didn't necessarily feel that way because yeah the civil war slavery ended um we learned about that with when we posted infographics about june team and in 1865 when slavery finally ended but um it's just also how uh like it, it still didn't feel that way for a lot of black people and then even fast forward to 2020 with the examples that uk brought up um which she talked about how wearing the mask as a black mother is kind of a scary thought you know what i mean as and, and how i can 
um, connect with that is, you know, the traumatizing event of Trayvon Martin's death in 2013. Since that moment, my mother, every time I, it like, because it doesn't get, luckily, it doesn't get too cold down here in South Florida. I know you can't relate traveling from Jersey to Chicago, but down here in South Florida, it doesn't get too cold for too long, but when it does get cold, um, you know, we throw on a hoodie, you know, and, and Trayvon Martin was killed wearing a hoodie and him wearing a hoodie kind of demonized him or made him a more imposing figure or however you may have it. And his black skin definitely contributed to that narrative. So my mother never would allow me to walk out the house with a hoodie on my head, which is its functional, you know, capacity. Like that's the whole point of a hoodie is to wear something to protect your head from the cold and be warm. But I would just have to suffer and have a cold head because wearing a hoodie made you a more imposing figure. It because it, it concealed your identity and it didn't allow you to be true and authentic. And I'm ranting here a little bit, but this is me being vulnerable with you right now. And you know, Ife saying that the mask kind of does the same thing. You know, it, it conceals your identity. It it kind of makes you more imposing, kind of scary, kind of you know, who are you? Are you friendly? Are you not? That you know, we feel that as Black people, we have to deal with those questions, those narratives that white people may not. To where it's kind of dangerous to wear a mask. You know, if you wear a mask and some sunglasses and it's a sunny day and you walk into a bank, people may think the wrong thing. You know, there's been some jokes about that on Twitter, but people may think the wrong thing. That's kind of what Ethan was saying. I remember one line in particular, and I wrote it down, and she was saying, am I going to die from a bullet or am I going to die from COVID? You know, that, so it's like, it's like, do I wear a mask and potentially be more scary or, or unidentifiable or do I wear the mask or do I not wear the mask and expose myself to a deadly disease so um, I just really thought that that nuance and and you know kind of so I remember Janine speaking out and saying you know it's kind of why we can't necessarily judge people for their decisions and why they don't want to wear a mask um, and to just be more compassionate about the situation. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my rant. That's kind of me venting to you, Georgie, and just, you know, this poem really touched me. So hearing all of that, I just, I just, I don't know if you want to compare your experience with a poem before and after knowing some information or just in general, like, you know, what are your thoughts on the poem? It's a powerful poem. So I rant a little bit. I'm going to give you the floor to speak as long as you need. Yeah, thank you. Definitely don't feel bad for ranting, though. You know, all of the points you made are really important. Um, and when I read that poem, and also when we were talking about the whole um, mask situation and how it regards to race, um, it made me think of how, you know, this past semester, I took a sociology class and a cultural studies class. Um, and both of those two subjects have a lot of overlapping um, topics. And one thing that um, I kept thinking about a lot this semester was the idea of double consciousness. So anyone who may be watching who's not familiar, that's like the idea that, you know, Black people, they need to, we all have this, you know, kind of existence is consciousness where we're thinking about our surroundings and um, reacting to them but then black people or you know um, people of color in general have to have a second layer of that where they not only have to think about you know just the regular things everyone else does but also how um, they might be perceived because of the color of their skin and I think that the mask is a good example because they not only have to um, think about you know um, whether or not to wear a mask because of the reasons everybody else is considering it, but they also have to think about, oh, is me wearing a mask going to make a white person um, judge me and racially profile me, which is, you know, another layer of like privilege that white people don't have to think about. So that's something that um, I've been thinking about a lot. And, you know, that's what the poem reminded me of. And just the whole, you know, conversations we've been having in general um, and this poem, it's really, interesting because the past few weeks have really kind of made me as a white person realize and I don't want to assume for other people but I feel like I've seen other people realize this too that like 
wow, there's so much that we don't have, like as white people, we don't have to think about on a daily basis if we don't want to, you know, and now like it's like really in the spotlight and I feel like, you know, it's, it's sad that this has to happen, but it's also, you know, I feel like a good, you know, potential for change, I hope, you know, and I, the poem is interesting too, because like you said, um, it reminds me of the, uh, it reminds me of the idea of double consciousness, but I feel like everyone can relate to it, you know, I feel like everyone has a mask to wear, and I feel like when you can, you know, relate to something for your own reason, it helps with empathy, it helps with understanding others, because another thing we talked about with the meeting house was this idea of cognitive acrobatics, which, you know, um, kind of relates to, you know, you have the choice to either sit in your bubble and justify your beliefs and um, I don't want to say be stubborn, but, you know, not challenge your ideas or you have the option to empathize with others and see the other, other people's point of view. And I feel like a lot of people are being challenged to see other people's point of view right now, which is really interesting to see. And hopefully it turns out for the best, you know? 100%. And everything that you said was great. And, you know, I read your reflection when you, when you mentioned cognitive acrobatics. And I loved it because it was a term that, like, I understood, but, like, you, you wrote it in such a way that made it easily understandable. Um, so definitely appreciate you for that and then also too like you kind of hit it the nail on the head and that's why I brought the point of you know art you know the message writing this you know in the 19th century um you know the message he might have been conveying was specific to you know racial justice and the experience of the, of the black individual in the 19th century America but then now in 20th century, it's also how do we take this in how do we um interpret this poem and I, I think, you know, kind of like you said, we all have privileges. Like, a lot of people have different oppressions they have to deal with. And in understanding that and internalizing that, it could allow us to, you know, develop some more compassion for one another. When we all start to realize we all have advantages, we all have privileges, but then we all have disadvantages. We all think that we, you know, struggle with, you know, all things that we are dealing with in our life, challenges in our life, mental health challenges. So, you know, I like that, that you really drove that point home. Um, and I think that's kind of the point of the poem. It's just for all of us. That's the point of, I think, these conversations um, that have been so tough to endure, so tough to deal with, such great learning experiences. But at the end of the day, like, let's all be gentle with ourselves, gentle with others, compassionate with others. You know, people do well if we can. So this is a, you know, transformative, chance, you know, formative point in a lot of our lives, hopefully, um, to where we can learn more, do more, and change for the better. But, you know, I love your sentiments on all that point. What I would end, though, with is us being flawless. It's important that we end. Understanding how tough these conversations are, understanding how tough this time is, you know, would love to hear, you know, a, a great self-care tip or two to help all of us through this time. Um, you know, what are you doing right now to help us get through these tough times? That's a good question. Um, Cause you know, the past few months I feel like self care has been really important. So I've been kind of cycling through different things to do. And right now, since I'm about to um, move into a new apartment, something that's been like a self care thing for me has been, um, it's really maybe silly, maybe a little bit specific, but I've been um, looking on like Pinterest and things like that. And I've been like, looking at furniture that's like way too expensive for me but it's like my dream furniture and I'm like kind of like manifesting to myself that one day I'm gonna be able to afford that I don't know why but it just makes me feel better it makes me feel like I have something to like look forward to like one day I'm gonna get that ridiculously expensive lamp and it's gonna look so good and I don't know it's silly but it's just like something that's been fun for me just the idea of like visual light because I feel like right now a lot of us can relate to the feeling of like not really sure what the future holds. So I feel like kind of visualizing what you want in the future might be helpful for a lot of people right now. That's beautiful. I, I like, as, as we go through these uncertain times, you know, instead of waiting for circumstances to dictate where you go, I like how you said you're, you know, kind of like a horse chasing a carrot. Um, like you're setting your point of where you want to go, what you want to obtain, and you're driving towards that despite everything going around. So 
that motivated me. I, I love that. And I would say, you know, studying myself with, with sports psychology and sports mental health, uh, visualization is huge. You know, visualizing who you want to be and where you want to be. I actually learned about that, funny enough, on a podcast this morning about, you know, you become who you want to be by visualizing it, by setting yourself in that frame of thought, and by surrounding your people who are already on that path or already accomplished that. So that's, you know, I do a lot of interviews, Georgie, but that might be my favorite self-care tip right there. So, you know, could, you know. but, uh, you know, on that note, definitely appreciate the conversation. This was an important conversation and much needed conversation. So I'm glad we were able to continue the Meeting Houses community conversation on this platform and, you know, appreciate the self-care tips. And I'm, you know, on that note, I'll let you go. So I hope you have a great day, Georgie. Thank you, too, and I appreciate your perspective as well. Thank you so much. Always. Keep being flawless.